So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the city of Woonsocket and the best water treatment facility in the state of Rhode Island. And uh, it is my pleasure to have you all here in attendance. And it is my, also my pleasure to introduce the mayor of the city of Woonsocket, Lisa baldelli Hunk. Thank you, Stephen. Not only do we have the best water treatment plant in the state, but I have the best director of public works <laughs> in the state. So there we go. Uh, but welcome to the city of Woonsocket. Welcome to our new water treatment plant. Uh, we have a beautiful facility here that we're very, very proud of. Um, I would like to, uh, before I, I make a few comments, and before I have the pleasure of introducing our governor, um, I would just like to recognize some folks who are here today. Uh, with us today is the council president from the city of Woonsocket, Councilman Dan Gendron. Uh, our senator, Senator Roger Pickard. The town administrator from North Smithfield, Paul Zwolenski. My former colleague and mayor of East Providence, Mayor Bob De Silva. Uh, Seema Dixit from the Rhode Island Department of Health. Pastor Chris. <laughs> and since I won't be introducing them, Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos and Jeff Deal from the Rhode Island Infrastructure Bank. So, Thank you to everyone for being here. This is a wonderful day. Uh, I thank you for showcasing uh, a beautiful uh, facility here. I would like to say that Woonsocket is extremely fortunate in many ways, but in particular, we were fortunate to have some very brilliant forefathers who uh, secured three reservoirs. Uh, so the city of Woonsocket owns three reservoirs. Uh, over the years and under the leadership in my administration of Director D'Agostino um, and the support of our council, we have continued to purchase additional land to protect our watershed and we continue to grow that. We find that to be extremely important and we will continue to do that. Uh, we also are very cognizant of the fact that uh, the value of water, the importance of water and the power of water. And uh, we know that from our fire hydrants right to our water facility here and everything in between is extremely important. Um, the city of Woonsocket is uh, rehabilitating our fire hydrants. Uh, we are putting in a new meter system for our residential and our commercial users. We will be doing that citywide. We are uh, working on the removal on the private side of lead piping and uh, we are looking to repair and replace mains. In addition to that, we'll also continue our research on potentially uh, putting in solar arrays to help to power our facility. Uh, but um, this facility is really something we're extremely proud of, and if there's ever a day that you get the opportunity to tour the facility, uh, it's extremely impressive. Um, but, uh, this facility, when we went out to bid, this facility came in at $61.3 million. But through the, I would say, innovative approaches, um, the diligence of the Director of Public Works, uh, being very fiscally responsible in Woonsocket, we're always very cautious with our funds, uh, we were able to have change orders that didn't increase the cost of the plant, but that actually decreased the cost of the plant uh, to $56.7 million. Uh, so we're very proud, we're happy that you're here, and we're truly happy that the governor chose this particular plant uh, to talk about um, an announcement today that I think is extremely important to uh, all the cities and towns across the state of Rhode Island. Uh, I would also like to mention the director of DEM, Director Terry Gray, who has been a phenomenal working partner uh, with the city of Woonsocket in so many different ways to help us uh, create a better environment here in Woonsocket. So, without further ado, uh, I would like to introduce uh, our, the former mayor of Cumberland, where we became friends working together, and um, also our governor, who's doing an absolutely phenomenal job for the state of Rhode Island, Governor Dan McKee. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mayor. It is, um, it's, it's beyond a pleasure to be here in the city of Woonsocket with you and, and recognizing your leadership on infrastructure today, but uh, many other things as we go along in terms of what you're doing for this, uh, you know, this community that I consider my second home. Mm -hmm. You know, being in business in Woonsocket all the years that I, that I was in small business, which drives me to help the small businesses around the state of Rhode Island, being a former small business owner. But as you mentioned, as a mayor, we understand how important infrastructure is. You've re you've recognized how important water is. Water is like gold. If you got it, you you got gold, and you've maximized that here with your leadership. So congratulations, along with your public works director Steve D'Agostino, uh, for and thank you for hosting us today. But thank you for that foresight. I know we 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 put money into Cumberland as well. We all put money into our infrastructure in terms of the water, and we sunk wells. They're actually going to start opening. A, you know, six years after I'm out of office, but you plant seeds and they grow, and that's what happens. And uh, we know that uh, it's very important. You talked about the meters. We did the meters as well, all the computerized meters. What's that's going to be quite an advantage to your to your de or water department and uh, and the billing cycles, and it's going to be very accurate for the people, the ratepayers. So it's very fair to them. So congratulations on that. But then I got to Sabina Matos. So it's nice to be here with you. You know, certainly traveling around all 39 cities and. In towns, I started in Newport this morning. I ended up in Woonsocket this afternoon. How can you get better than that? <laughs> it's so important uh, that our municipal leaders and other stakeholders, as as we all know, want to recognize them. Director Terry Gray and and also Department of Health Jeff uh, from the Infrastructure Bank, uh, representatives from our cities and towns. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're, we were um, just let here last fall at a ribbon cutting, and I was here for a tour of the facility um, when you had a, like an open house, I believe, that day, right, um, Steve? And uh, what a fabulous facility this is. High tech uh, in every shape and form. Uh, and so it's great to be here to now to be talking about the value of our infrastructure bank and what, what we can um, achieve because of the opportunities that we have in front of us. We know that, uh, you know, the benefits that, uh, that the infrastructure brought to the Woonsocket Rivers, uh, water, that is cleaner and healthier and, and, and a process that is more efficient and eco-friendly. Uh, and I know that uh, that means a great deal to the people that live in our communities. So we want to, uh, uh, we want this to happen in every city and town. And that's what we're here to talk about today. The Infrastructure Bank is expecting nearly $700 million from the bipartisan infrastructure law, which has given us the ability to make transformational investments in our infrastructure. I've said before, an investment in our infrastructure is also an investment in our jobs, investment in our economy, and an investment in our environment. All three key issues for the future of the state of Rhode Island. That's why I proposed in, in the budget that I, that I presented in front of the General Assembly, now $22 million in state matching dollars for federal clean and drinking water programs, uh, dollars in, in to help uh, assist uh, communities on the lead pipe issue. Uh, these are investments that we have laid in because we know they're so important and integral to the futures of our state and the communities and the people who live in our communities. So my message to our municipal leaders, as well as the heads of any of the agencies, and big or small, I encourage you to take advantage of this historic funding, submit your proposals for clean air and drinking water projects in your communities. I know that Jeff will have more to say about that in more detail, but take this opportunity not only to protect the water supplies in your communities and other infrastructure areas, but also take this opportunity to make sure that we take advantage of good paying jobs, right? Protect our environment. And most importantly, to provide clean, healthy water to our the citizens and to our communities across the state of Rhode Island. So with that, as I would just like to introduce the Lieutenant Governor, Sabina, come on up. And uh, congratulations, Lisa, for hosting here today and, and having the foresight to get ahead of this issue uh, and making sure that the water supply in, in Woonsocket, and I know what you said is true, your, you know, your people who founded this community protected that water supply, and you have one of the strongest water supplies in the entire state of Rhode Island, so congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. As you know, the governor's a little bit taller than me. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much for hosting us here today. It's always good to be here in Woonsocket. I really enjoy every time I have the opportunity to come to your city. And thank you for the great job you're doing. 
Um, it's good to see a woman in charge getting things done. <laughs> and thank you, Mayor De Silva. It's good to see you here also. I love coming to your city also. I just want to say uh, thank you for highlighting this facility and the work that you're doing. Uh, clean water is key in order and essential in our community. This is the way how we can protect our children from lead poisoning. We can make sure that our state is resilient for climate, for climate change. And the bipartisan infrastructure law is going to provide an investment in our community here in the state of Rhode Island. Um, we're going to be receiving $695 million. So as the governor said, we want to encourage every community, every single community in the state to apply for this fund to make sure that you improve the infrastructure of your cities and towns. This is a, we've been waiting for the opportunity to have funding available. The funding is here. Make sure that you apply as soon as possible. Get, uh, get those uh, infrastructure uh, work that you wanted to do for quite a while when we didn't have the funds. Make sure that you apply and get it done. You could be replacing the lead pipes. You could be uh, managing this, this stormwater runoff or you can be improving the conservation of our local waterways. There's so many things that you can do, and I'm pretty sure that Director Terry Gray can give you a good idea of what they have in plan. <laughs> DEM always have a plan of thing wish list that we would like to get done, so he can uh, give you some ideas. So I just want uh, to say that together we will improve the health equity of our state, our, the, for the residents of our state, and we're going to ad advance the environmental justice here in the state of Rhode Island. This is just a great opportunity to do that. And a good partner on getting that work done is the Rhode Island Infrastructure Bank. And it's always a pleasure for me to be in an event uh, with Jeff Deal because I know something good is happening. That I had had that experience with him when I was in the city of Providence, continue to be always. So every time I'm with him in, at, in a, an event, I know something good is happening. So it's really my pleasure to introduce Jeff Deal. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm tall enough. <laughs> Thanks, Lieutenant Governor. Thanks. And uh, you know, thank you, Governor McKee, for organizing this event, supporting the bank's mission, and delivering below-market financing for local infrastructure investments in transportation, clean energy, water, brownfields, and climate uh, resilience. And thank you for your partnership, Mayor Bedelli Hunt and Mayor De Silva. <clears throat> and also, uh, we've got a very good relationship and our, our technical partners with DEM and Director Terry Gray and seeing the Department of Health. Um, you know, since we were founded 30 years ago, we've invested over $2 billion in, in uh, infrastructure, predominantly in water, and we've created or supported 63,000 jobs. And then we've also saved communities hundreds of millions of dollars in reduced interest expense. I think we saved the city of uh, Woonsocket over a million dollars on this project in terms of uh, partnering with them and helping. So the governor said, uh, you know, the bipartisan infrastructure law commits uh, about $700 million over the next five years to the infrastructure bank. Uh, there is a required state match, and thank you, Governor, for including uh, the $22 million in your budget for the next couple of years that will get us there. It also includes about $160 million worth of grants and principal forgiveness, so a significantly greater amount of what we'll call free money than we've had in the past. Of course, that's what a lot of people are interested in. Um, <clears throat> but the investment in safe drinking water, improving the economy through the environment, through reduced water pollution by managing wastewater, it addresses lead pipe remediation and emerging contaminants. Uh, it's also about investment in large facilities such as this one, uh, or new wells in Cumberland, like you heard from the governor, uh, or wastewater treatment facilities more resilient and warm in, in Warwick. But it's also not just lar uh, large projects and pipes in the ground, it's other things as well. It's upgrading and replacing drinking water systems in low-income manufactured housing communities like we've done a number of times over the last years. Replacing cesspools and improving septic systems in low to moderate income neighborhoods. And it's also more than just, as I said, the pipes in the ground or large facilities. It's also green infrastructure to manage pol polluted stormwater runoff that also has secondary benefits, such as creating green space in, in Central Falls and in Olneyville. Reducing beach closure dates to the Bristol Town Beach. It also addresses landfill issues and runoff uh, such as in New Shoreham and their landfill that was damaged by Superstorm Sandy. Uh, in fixing that and reducing the pollution runoff uh, and uh, items going into the bay. It's also about uh, <clears throat> water conservation and efficiency, subsurface water restoration and protection, habitat protection, fish ladders and dam removal, 
planning and assessments as well. So how do we help our cities and towns get those plans and assessments to move these projects forward? And we really encourage our communities to think big, even think small, and creatively. Engage with the bank, please, to help us re help you rethink how these financing and grant programs can help your community improve. Of course, all the projects need to be on the project priority lists of our partners at DEM and Department of Health. Uh, very simple thing, though, but it's got to be on that project priority list. And you heard that mentioned earlier before you can uh, apply to the infrastructure bank. But simple process will help you do that. This is a generational investment water infrastructure that's going to make Rhode Island an even better place to live, work, and play. Please contact the Infrastructure Bank and we'll help you explore opportunities and uh, let's get this money to work. Thank you very much. <laughs>